beware of the bears. My name's Alex, I'm one of the original explorers of the K4117. Um, it was actually Goldie who's over there currently cleaning the equipment who uh, found the hole. But, oh, it's interesting because uh, the spider webs in there, they're blowing about like a, like a madden and uh, pointed us at it. We were meant to be going down back of that day, we were just meant to be spending you know, half an hour just seeing if this went anywhere. So we got there after a couple of hours trying to find it because his directions were a little vague. Uh, wandered through all the other holes, finding existing caves and possibly finding a new one. But he came to this cave, moved the boulder out of the way, slid me in, and I dug from the other side. And I said, "Guys, guys, this is actually going." I could see passage behind me, and it was uh, and it was blackness. So I was thinking, "Wow, this is actually going." So I got the got the whole team in, and then we started slowly making our way through there. It's a beautiful pristine formations, so we have to zigzag between all the calcite and not before long we came to our first hole in the ground but we had no rigging gear with us so we just stepped over that and carried on and again we came to another hole in the ground with a, a deeper drop again no rigging gear so we carried on and we were, and we came to what we thought was uh, the end because we could see a calcite uh, passage going off and it choked very narrow um, but uh, his jaw went down there and he decided to um, push it and lo and behold it opened up into walking passage um, beautifully decorated again nice helicites um, it's into a cross rift section uh, to the left was a rift that disappeared we again we were just exploring the main way on to the right pass was a squeeze past some helicites got to be very careful there because he could easily damage them and not before long we came to um, a very large hole in the ground we distilled it and what we thought was a depth that came to 14 meters but um, we later proved that was wrong. <laughs> so um, we surveyed, we surveyed what we could. Um, we, as I say, we had no rigging gear, and by then the day was over. We had a meal to get to. So when you found the dig, you, you just went for a wander up here. Oh, uh, that oak tree there. Look, so you got the entrance. Yeah. We were all digging, taking it turns. And I figured it was probably near enough my turn in sort of half hour. So I stopped. I'll have a quick pee by that oak tree over there. And then, uh, so while I'm here. I was looking, you look down the valley and there's a little house just off the valley. Yep. They'd already had a sniff around their garden, but um, quite a nice house. So, yeah. so oh, what I'll do is I'll go around where all the brambles are, because they're all low this time of year. And then I turned left and went into sort of the forest line and dipped down the hill a bit. And there's a track not too dissimilar to this that runs down the hill. Crossed over that and there's lots of little opportunities in there. And just so I had a little bit of a sniff around. And as I came back up, I thought, oh, I've had enough. Come back up, got to the farmer's field. And uh, I thought, oh, there's one last sort of depression there. And there was a, a, a sort of a, a faint outline of a, an old dry stone wall, if you like, and a couple of sticks the farmer had put in the ground above on the edge of his field to sort of probably, you know, just deter cows who wouldn't have stopped pulling in. And uh, I thought, well, it's worth a look around. So I just had a look around, moved all the brambles out of the way, gave them a good old kick with my feet, stuck my head down a hole, and there was a good draft coming out of it. And that led to what we're about to go into. There's lots of little nooks and crannies, but this one had, like the brambles that are around you, it was just all great right down here. So I just kicked it in with my feet. This was a lot smaller hole in it at the time, a little boulder in it, but you could sort of, at the time, you could see a cobweb that was spanning it. And it was fluttering around a good one, and a little bit of ivy in there that was fluttering, so I thought it's a good draft. So uh, here we are, dug out a little bit more now for those that are more muscular built than others. What have you named the hole? Sorry? What have you named the cave? Uh, it, it's gone through a couple of different names, but we think it's part of the Langdales series, so it'll probably just adopt, you know, being part of the Langdales. Whether we give this entrance its own name at some stage, I don't know. Probably will do. Beware of the bears. Really? Calling this uh, Hansel and uh, Hansel and Grotto's crawl because the uh, the lads when they left the cave the other day 
maybe they were being chased by bears, I don't know. But uh, something distracted them and they'd left equipment every few metres through the cave. We sort of found a club hammer one minute, a few more metres, water bottle, a few more metres, somebody's torch, a few more metres, crowbar, and it went on. And it was like they'd left a, a snail trail of equipment through this part of the cave. There we go. Dropping the floor here, up into the bottom, doesn't go anywhere. Found the hole, um, and then uh, we had work to do in big <coughs> holes, so I handed the project over to the young lads because they kind of needed to get their team on a project. So I said, Well, before you go and do anything else, then have a quick look because they were in this area, have a quick look at this drafting hole and see what happens. And uh, we joined them back in the car in the afternoon. Um, they'd done 100 metres worth of survey. We're all dead excited and running around in circles, sort of making silly noises, so um, all good stuff. And uh, but the best thing was they came back saying it continued. You're pleased to find all this? Yeah. Well, it's always nice when it, you know, you open a hole and it does go somewhere. Yeah, it's a nice place. So if you turn left there, Steve. Yeah. Along that sort of traverse there. If you go along that. Yeah. We get to the next little sort of open space, just just know, a few metres ahead of you. Look right, and you uh, you'll see the rope in place, which is sort of the the start of where we go down the big pitch. Okay. What's the rope over where you are for? So the rope over where I am traverses around the top of the big pitch, the 70 metre, and goes to what we call Yogi Bear Chamber, where the bear is. Right. Okay. And also the continuation of the cave when we got down to the bottom of the 70 metres, we found that there was just nothing at the bottom. No more teeth and bones and bits that have obviously washed in at some stage. It doesn't go anywhere. There is a traverse that goes off to the left hand side, but we suspect that joins up with another part of the cave that we've now found at a higher level. So is this the pitch? This is the, I'm on sort of on top, the same level as you. 70 metres below us is the bottom. So we've got a short pitch there down to the ledge. Traverse around the ledge. Another short pitch of around 12 metres. And there's about an 8 metre. Around the ledge again. Uh, then you've got a bit of, it's got a kerfuffle before you get onto the bigger pitch at the bottom, which until it's surveyed, you don't know, but I suspect it's about 25 metres to the bottom-ish. Um, I suspect that someone had to go up, that's tally. <laughs> but when we chucked this one down, it, it was something like 75 metres. So what an exciting depth. Good fun, it's not too trick. Well, they were gobsmacked when they found all this. Yeah, I think they found it a little bit a bit sort of, you know, awe-inspiring, and then, then the question started going through there, what the hell did we do with it? So this is Yogi's cavern? Yeah, he's over there on the ledge. <laughs> Sorry, big you on then. <laughs> so this is Yogi? So Yogi, and where we last fell there. So, a uh, whole number of bones there, going down through to the floor. We can see the jaw split into two pieces there, or the lower jaw, look, one on the top um, rock. And there's one right down the bottom there. You see bits of hip, vertebrae, and a few other bones. So where the rest of him has gone, probably down through the slot somewhere. Be interesting to try and find the rest of him. Now it's, it's not the only thing that's interesting there, because to back up the bare bones, okay, we've also got a couple of pits in here. And we're going to photograph those if we can in a bit. And the pits have got claw marks at the back of them. They're rounded pits, one just being just behind us here. So we've got one just in there, so there's a little alcove, and in there, if you go in there, to the back of it, you find a sandy floor, and you'll see the claw marks at the back. And it's one of about four that we found in this section, they go up through the cave, where obviously Mr Yogi came in, made a comfortable nest, probably to hide them in. So, um, amazing how they see their way, isn't it? I mean, you look at that floor, fairly agile, but they're mm -hmm. in the dark, aren't they? Yeah. Didn't have a, a skewerian on their head, did they? Yeah. <laughs> what up?
Good. Right, okay. Well, adios. Adios. Okay. Adios. Adios. No.